One of the most important concepts in category theory is that of a monad. A monad on a category E is an internal monoid in a tensor category, or monoidal category, of endofunctors on E, where the tensor product is given by composition and the unit is given by the identity endofunctor. Precisely, we can give a data structure properties definition of a monad, since it is just a monoid. The data is given by an endofunctor, T. The structure is given by two natural transformations, mu and eta, where mu goes from T squared to T, and eta goes from the identity endofunctor to T. And the properties it must satisfy are the associativity law and the unit law. The associativity law just states that, starting with T cubed, we can either apply the multiplication mu on the left first and then multiplication again, or we can take multiplication on the right first and then multiplication again, and, and the resulting composition of those two morphisms are equal. In other words, the square commutes. The unit law just states that starting with t, we can apply the unit either on the left or on the right, and then take the multiplication, and that should give us back the identity endomorphism. We'll skip the following example for now, since there is a mistake in there. Instead of the Cartesian product, we should have had the tensor product, and we'll come back to this later. But for now, let's just prove the main result of this section. Since the joint situations are ubiquitous throughout mathematics, we'll find that monads are also ubiquitous, and that's because every adjoint situation induces a monad, and that's what this result states. Every joint situation where f is a left adjoint and u is a right adjoint from a category A to E yields a monad on E, where the monad endofunctor is given by the composition of uf. The monad multiplication natural transformation is u epsilon f, where epsilon is the co-unit of the adjunction, and the unit eta is just going to be the unit of the adjunction. And we'll call this monad t. So let's prove this. Since the co-unit epsilon is a natural transformation from fu to the identity, we can take some object x in E, apply f to it, and then look at the co-unit on the component fx. And the co-unit is a arrow in A, and so we have this naturality square which takes fu epsilon fx to epsilon fx. Then since this square commutes, we can apply this functor u to the square, and since every functor preserves commutativity diagrams, we have that this diagram commutes. But this diagram is nothing other than the, the associativity law, since uf is our functor t. And so we see that we have t cubed going to t in two different ways, and these two different ways are exactly the, the morphisms that are involved in the associativity square. So we see that our associativity law is satisfied. Secondly, we want to verify the unit law. And so what we do is we take the, the unit and we apply it on the left and on the right of our functor t, which is uf. And then we take the multiplication, which is u epsilon fx. And we want to verify that these two triangles actually give us the identity. And in fact, they do. And it comes from the triangle identities for the a joint situation. For the left triangle, we have u epsilon fx precomposed by eta ufx equals the identity on ufx. And that is just straightforward from the definition of a, the, the triangle identity for an adjoint situation. For the right-hand side, we have u epsilon fx precomposed by uf eta x. And we can take out that u since u preserves composition. And then on the inside of these parentheses, we see that we have the other triangle identity on the object fx. So we have u of epsilon fx precomposed by f eta x equals u identity fx. And then since functors preserve the identity morphism, we have that this is equal to the identity on u fx. And that is precisely the, uh, the unit law. And so we see that every adjoint situation actually does yield a monad. And we'll, we'll call this the induced monad of the adjoint situation.